So we're at the point now that we can introduce, what do we do if we don't have normally distributed data? So we actually met that assumption really nicely here. We've got a, a great experiment that fit really well to our model. But what if instead of the browning quality being on this continuous scale, and this continuous scale, by the way, was from 4.1 to 17, the, the scale was intended to be from one to 20, but in fact, the um, nobody rated very low and nobody rated very high. So these are, uh, they ended up being between 4.1 and 17, a, a restricted part of that full range. What if instead of this continuous measure of brown inequality, we measured the number of brown spots that we see on the pretzels? So instead of a continuous measurement that we were assuming a normal distribution for, instead we now have something that it, we're counting. A count is usually not normally distributed. And here we see the distribution is super hard to, to figure out what would fit this well because we've got a couple observations up here at the six and seven, lots of uh, twos and threes. This is, yeah, threes and twos. And then some zeros. So we don't have any ones, we don't have any uh, four fives. So this, this distribution is really hard to know what this should be. We have very limited observations. Um, really, if we look at this um, from the distribution platform, and let's just look at it as a histogram, and I'll turn in the other direction. This is not a lot of data, so it's hard to see this perfectly, but really the, the best distribution to describe most count situations is a Poisson distribution, which will have a, a lot of data in the early part and then a long skinny tail at the end. So a few times you'll get high counts, but most of the time you'll get pretty low counts. So Poisson distribution is the distribution you usually will use for count data, sometimes negative binomial. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So in this case, brown spots probably should not be assumed to be normally distributed. If you look at these data, we have lots of repetition of just these whole number counts this probably should not be treated as normally distributed. So if we want to run this model at this point, we no longer can use the tools that are native in jump right now. We need to use this add-in. So let's switch back to the slides for a second. And now we're at the point that we're going to move on from a normal distribution into non-normal distributions. And so when we use that generalized model, we're generalizing the distribution to other things. So it doesn't have to be these, but the most common cases are that you've got count data, this third one, that's what we're gonna deal with right now, or binomial data where you're looking at how many successes out of a certain number of trials. The number of trials does not have to be identical for each run. So for example, you could look at plants that are growing in a greenhouse and plant number one has seven leaves. And so you look at how many of those leaves have aphids eating them. So it's gonna be the number out of seven for that plant. The second plant only has five leaves. So you look at how many have aphids eating the leaves out of five. So you can have the number of trials could change or it could be constant for each, uh, each plant. You could say, I'm only gonna look at the first five leaves at the top of the plant for all, all plants. So the number of successes out of trials, sometimes you're gonna record this as the number of successes in one column and the number of trials in another column. Sometimes you'll record this as proportions. You'll actually do that division yourself and say, ah, this one had 30% aphid uh, damage on the leaves and this one had 56%. So binomial data could show up in a couple different ways where we have the successes out of trial, out, out of the number of trials or percentages. Another option is a simplified version of the binomial where we only have an N of one. So instead of counting up the number of leaves on a plant, we just look at the plant and say, did it have any aphid damage? Yes or no. So just two distinct values, yes or no, would be this binary situation. Still binomial, but where the N is just exactly one. So these are the three most common, but there are other possibilities for the generalized distribution. Uh, but we'll talk about these essentially today. And when we're specifying this generalized linear mixed model, we need to know what the distribution is. That So it's not normal. What, what distribution assumption do we want to use? So for count, we're going to use Poisson. If we have uh, binomial, we'll use the binomial distribution. Um, 
So linear predictor is the, the typical thing where we just want to know what are the fixed effects, what are the random effects, what's the response. The link function is going to be tied back to that distribution. There is usually a canonical link function, meaning like a default link function that goes with the specific distribution. Or you can choose a different link function for a distribution, but we'll stick with canonical today and I'll talk more about that as we get into the add-in. Now the methodology that's used in this add-in is called restricted pseudo likelihood. This is the method that's going to make the estimates. This is a linearization method, it, meaning that it uses a Taylor series expansion to figure out what these uh, weights should be and then run it like it's a normal distribution. So it's what's, what it's doing is it's going to end up giving us a report that looks like the standard least squares as if it were normally distributed. This is a, a really, this is probably the best method to use, which is why we've chosen to use it. It's what's used in the Glimix macro in SAS. Um, most likely this is, this is what we want to be using. However, if you did need to try other algorithms, if you're interested in more information about this fitting method, you can look through this resource, the SAS for Mixed Models book, the third edition, chapters 11 through 13 talk about generalized linear mixed models. Um, chapter 11 is binomial sort of situations, 12 is Poisson count sort of situations, 13 is much more complex models which aren't possible in, in this add-in yet. And then if you really just want to learn about the estimation methods, that's going to be in section 11.4.8. So we're using this restricted pseudo likelihood method, which is one of the linearization methods. There are also integral approximation methods, the Laplace or quadrature, which can be good if you need to test for over dispersion. So that's not possible in the add-in, but we can still do a few other things to help us um, get a sense about if there's over dispersion. So we'll talk about that more also in a moment. <clears throat> 